Welcome to the Missouri Valley Preview Show. My friend Kate Popovic Goss, the third year head coach at Bradley. Kate, it's always great to see you. I can feel your energy through the screen. Good. Happy to be here. Excited to chat about our team. Um, we're a lot of new parts, but excited about them. Um, so far, they've just been a joy to coach, which has been really, really fun for us. I know you work on your culture every day, and it's a part of what coaches do and building relationships and all that. I mean, tell us a little bit about you know, what your team's going to look like and what we can look forward to. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. I think one of the things that we focused on, obviously, have had a lot of roster overturn. I think that's common now, but especially to be expected as you're, you know, taking over a program and rebuilding. Um, we wanted to pay a lot of attention to winning, which is something that we paid attention to in the freshmen that we've recruited and really specifically in the transfers. So we brought um, in four transfers, three of which come from very successful programs. They have postseason experience, championship experience, and you could see that maturity kind of infiltrating um, just through the locker room, even in little things that you see, making sure the freshmen are on time and they know where they're going on campus, um, which has been exciting, but we're big. Uh, that's something I've been aiming to do is to get bigger. Um, and we are very, very big. I am no longer the tallest person on the roster and we all know I'm almost six foot four. Uh, so that's exciting. And, um, you know, we're able to spread the floor. You're going to see us play with a lot of five out actions. Um, and defensively, I think that we're, we have great length and great mobility. Um, so we've got some really fun defensive combinations where I think we're going to be able to do different things. I remember you vividly talking to me about, my defensive strategy and being, being able to execute different ball screen coverages and things of that nature. And, and that's what we're trending. Um, it's going to take some time to get it together because we do have nine new faces. Um, but it's just been really exciting to teach this group and they have high basketball IQs. So things are coming together. Um, I think as quickly as you can expect when you have that many newcomers, <laughs> you know, I like to say under overhead strap, ice jam, switch, drop the eight different variations of a ball screen coverage. Uh, and I know that you scheme and you prepare for whatever you need based on, your opponent. And that's what the preseason is all about, right? Putting in concepts that can allow your team to on the fly when you can adjust in, in, in game. Absolutely. And I think that that's, a, a, you hit it on the head with us. What we're working on on both ends is concepts, um, trying to build out a system where our kids can play with some freedom. That's always been a goal of ours. And um, especially on the offensive end, I'm not a coach that likes to micromanage the game. I just, you know, I, I like to have a lot of fun letting the kids play with freedom. I think that that freedom's earned on the defensive end. That's always been my philosophy. Um, so us coming to life in that way has been fun. Um, we obviously have have struggled on the defensive end in the past two years, and I'm really excited. And it's been a challenge for us since we got them in the gym in the summer for that to change. Um, and so we've worked a ton on our defense. Um, we're starting to see bits and pieces come together again. We have much better size and I think we have some depth, which is great. So, um, we're excited. And like I said, I think this team is going to be growing throughout the year. I think every time you see us, we're going to look a little bit different, a little bit more polished. Um, and we're just excited I, more than anything. I think the energy this team has and their commitment to what we're trying to build has been really exciting. A great teacher is always a great learner. What did you do in the off season, you know, with the personnel that you have and how you, you know, you said five out and you got more size. I think the game is about positional size. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, I think one of the things that uh, you have to do as a coach is adjust. Um, and I think when you come in with a specific philosophy, a specific recruiting philosophy, a specific um, defensive philosophy, which are two things that I really took a lot of pride in as a head coach coming in, um, you always have to be prepared to go, okay, what's next and what makes sense for us. And I think that that's a big thing that we looked at this spring and this summer. Um, really, a lot of the summer was spent learning our team. You know, we kind of knew what we looked like on paper, but until you get kids in the gym and you really see them, um, you don't know until you know. And so this summer, it was a lot of competition, a lot of what we can we call our controllables, which aren't going to change whether we're, you know, have these people on the floor, these people on the floor. So we got a ton of defensive stuff in and started adding concepts and it was fun to see everyone come together. So like you said, the size of the positions and honestly for us being able to spread the floor is kind of what I've always wanted to do. And um, I think this year one through 15 were built to do that. And that's been exciting. Um, I think for us injuries has, has been an unfortunate mm -hmm. thing that's been associated with us. We had um, one of our really talented freshmen who was probably going to take over at the PG spot for us. She went down in the third week of summer, which was, um, obviously a hit for us, but what I liked was our team's resiliency and their ability to come back. And as coaches, we're going to adjust. And, um, I think our team has done a great job and, and Nia has done a great job staying with the team and, and growing through her injury right now. 
Kate, with the added size around your, your team, not just on your front line, but on your perimeter as well, and you mentioned five out, um, sometimes people equate size with pace, meaning maybe it's going to be slower. Maybe you're going to have more depth. You can speed it up. I mean, what, what do you see happening with the pace of play? Um, I think for us, it's all predicated off if we can get stops. If we can get stops, we're going to be able to play with great pace. Um, I think that the greatest teams that I've coached and I've been a part of and everyone has different philosophies are teams that can compete at any tempo. And that's kind of a goal of ours. And one of the things that we emphasize with our team is, you know, there's prolific scoring teams in this league. Um, you know, mm -hmm. if you look at the top of our league, people can put up 100 points really fast. I think that's unrealistic for where we're at right now. We have to be able to get stops to be able to compete. And that's been the big point of emphasis with us. I think that we are going to be able to play with pace throughout 40 minutes of game. I think it's going to be about controlling the pace based off our matchups and what fits us best in that situation. Um, and that's a goal that we have. And especially, I think, you know, hopefully we can keep this team together for this year and the following year. The majority of them um, are underclassmen or juniors. So, you know, I'm excited to continue to see them grow and evolve. But that pace game, we ain't beating certain people in this league at that pace game. So what's the best for us? And I think that that's a big point of emphasis right now in the preseason. If you were going to give us two or three pillars or staples that we can look forward to about your team as we get ready to launch into conference play or non-conference play, what would be a couple of things about your team we're looking forward to? Uh, I think the first is toughness. That's the biggest thing that we've been talking about. Um, that's the biggest thing that we've been working on. We read Jay Billis's book in the off season. Our team was tasked with coming up with what we call two toughness metrics that they're going to hold each other accountable to every day that have some teeth to them. And they're small, you know, it's not huge, but I wanted them to have, you know, pillars of our culture that they feel like they have input in. So I think toughness is the first one. Um, we want to be gritty. I think the second is versatility. Um, we're a much more balanced team this year. Um, obviously, in the past two years, we've kind of had, you know, guards that we put the ball in their hands and we're putting a lot of pressure on them to be the ones. Um, I think this year, one of the things that we looked for is we wanted a much more balanced attack. We wanted a team that had a lot of kids that could give you eight to 10 points versus one that could give you 18. And then what's the next up? And so I think that versatility is exciting for us. And I think the last thing is I want this team to play the spirit. Um, it sounds kind of corny. It sounds kind of, you know, just trendy to say that. But the reality is, is I want them to have fun. Um, and coaching this team has been fun. Um, they allow me to be myself, which has been great. And myself is highly competitive, a little crazy at times. Uh, <laughs> I've got a lot of personality. Um, but it's been fun to coach them because, they see that in me and it's a, it's a group that you can have fun with off the court, but as soon as they step between the lines, they know we're about our business. And um, that's been exciting. I think, especially our veterans, you know, we have a couple of kids that have played for a long time and we brought in a fifth year senior from Toledo. Her name is Soleil Barnes. She's a kid that knows how to work hard and have fun while she does it. And I think that that's trickled down through some of our kids. And, and I think too, one of the things I want them to do is find the spirit and the joy in competition. Like yeah. that's the fun part. Like that that's what's supposed to be great. And so um, those are the things that I think you'll see with our team and, and that we're really excited to showcase once, once we get out, but not too soon, you know, players want to play coaches want to practice. So we right. got, we got a few more practices before we get there. Well, you know what? It's supposed to be fun, right? These are kids playing a game that they love for the right reasons. And if, if that's the case, then you're going to see it permeate through your team and you're going to be able to feel it when you watch your team play. I'm looking forward to the positional size, the pace that you're going to play with, Kate, and the pure joy of loving the game. Thanks for being with us on the Missouri Valley Preview Show. Yeah, we um, absolutely no problem. We're excited about the season and go Braves. Hey, look who we got next on the preview show from Bradley University, Ruba Abu Hashish. Thank you, Ruba, for being with us. Thank you. Honored to be here. Hey, listen, you're a fifth year player now. Like you're a veteran in, underneath. Coach Popovic, tell us how it's going so far in the preseason. Um, it's going great. You know, uh, obviously we're a brand new team. So we're working on setting the standards and building a winning culture, which I feel like we've done a really good job of. We have people that works really hard and want to be better every day. So it's really exciting. Now it's all about finding our identity as a team. So it's going good. When we talk to Coach about you, she uses words like dynamic, uh, leader, winner. That's got to be an incredible compliment for somebody who works as hard as you do in the off season to get ready. Tell us what that means to you. Absolutely. I mean, um, you know, I, I love playing under Coach Pop. I think she brings out the best in me. She brings out the best in people. So 
Um, I want to win this year, and I hope that me being like a natural leader that that can be contagious, and that um, we can see a lot of progress this year. I can tell by the look on your face that you love the game. I know you love being at Bradley. Tell us a little bit about why you enjoy so much, and where that motivation and that inspiration for the pure joy of the game comes from. I mean, I, I'll tell you this. I love the underdog story. So that was a part of like why I chose Bradley in the first place, because I want to be a part of Coach Pop's vision and rebuilding a program and, and, and all of that. And my love for the basketball started really young. I knew that I wanted to play in America uh, when I was young. I started when I was 12 in Sweden. Uh, I went to JUCO the first two years. So that kind of, you know, introduced me to American basketball and the American mindset that you needed to have to succeed on this level. Um, so obviously getting an opportunity to play at the division one level was something young me fought her ass off. So I, I never take that for granted. I love that. I love that mentality. Um, tell us a little bit about growing up in Sweden and why you were 12. Most girls start playing basketball around eight or nine. What was what was going on? Uh, well, none of my family played basketball before, so I never really got int introduced to that until later age because it was like a trend in my neighborhood. So I was like, oh, let's try it out. And uh, I fell in love with the sport and um, Sweden, like basketball in Sweden is it's very fun. It's very uh, fundamental. Like if you would compare that to like the American, I feel like American basketball goes a lot faster, a lot of more shifty players. So uh, it was a transition, but um I feel like my high school prepared me good in Sweden, so I'll shout them out. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, like international players come over here and they're always good ball handlers. They can pass. They see the floor. They just have a different way about them. You talk about shifty, right? There's a lot of athleticism, but I, I love that um, description about the international style of play. Coach says that she wants you to play with freedom. I guess that's partly because of the way you grew up playing the game. Absolutely, um, especially with the offense that we're trying to build and that we've been practicing so far. It's a lot of five out. It's a lot of just make the right reads and, and play freely. So it's going to be exciting. One of the things that Coach Pop has done through the offseason is add some size, some perimeter size, some positional length. Um, as a guard who will have some ball handling responsibilities playing with some of that size, you know, what do you see as your main purpose and your responsibility to help this team win? I mean, I, I love that we are so much bigger this year. It's going to be so exciting, especially because we were undersized a lot this year. Um, I think one of my biggest responsibilities is to put them in the right spot to be successful. If I'm coming off a pick and roll, know what, who players they like to pick and pop and what players they like to roll, um, see the floor and get them, get them the ball early on the block, you know point guard stuff. So yeah, good point guard stuff, Rue. But thank you for sharing some of that with us uh, on the preview show. And we look forward to watching your success this season under Coach Pop and the Bradley Braves. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Kaylin Nelson, five games last year, but getting ready to be a major impact in what Bradley does this year on the floor. Kaylin, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I mean, I mean, five games and the injury and how's your rehab going? First of all, we want to know how your your health is. Uh, yeah, it's going really well. Um, progressing at a very fast rate. I'm pretty ahead of the game. Um, I have a month left until I'm fully cleared. So that's very exciting. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's going really well. Really excited. How is your mental capacity on playing at such a high level, having the misfortune of some adversity, and now you're bouncing back. You know, tell us about the journey to bounce back to be able to be a full-time player again. Yeah, um, it's it's hard. Um, this is my first major injury that I've ever had in, a, in my career. Um, usually I just have like a twisted ankle, a jammed finger, something that you can shake off or walk off. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely very mentally taxing. Um, and then going through the surgery process and the rehab, it's it's not easy. Um, but I do love this game. And with having love for the game, you you're gonna push through any adversity that you have. Um, so extra rehab, extra reps. Um, I know that it's all gonna get me back on the court one day. Um, a lot of people don't talk about. Um, the, the mental capacity of injuries like this. Um, usually they think about the physical and how taxing it is, but 
as athletes, we do that every day. We do that every day with practice and weights, but the, the mental capacity is hard. So just trying to stay strong in my faith. Um, I'm a very faith-based person. So trusting God that he has a plan for me. And I know that I'll get back on the court one day. So last year, while you're going through all this, you do have a role on the bench. Um, you are helping, trying to keep the team together, playing whatever leadership role you can play. How much are you going to fall back on the adversity that you faced and your ability to bounce back and how that's going to manifest itself this year on this year's team? Yeah, it's I, I'm excited for it. Um, last year was very difficult for me. Um, just not being able to be in it, you know. I I saw myself as a as a leader on the team, and when you go down and you can't be in it with them, it's it's hard to stay with them, if that makes sense. Um, just trying to talk to them from the sidelines and trying to give what I can uh, verbally, since I can't do physically. Um, but now that I'm starting to imp be implemented more into practice and more into weights and being a feeling like a part of the team again. Um, it, it really gets my expectations high and it really puts me in an exciting position where I'm not nervous to come back. I, I'm more than ready to come back and I just can't wait for that day. Well, we can't wait either. We love to hear your story of success, your, your toughness in battling through and, you know, your teammate Ruba used the word underdog. Bradley feels like an underdog, right? I mean, and you look like you personify some of that. Where does that grit come from? Um, honestly, it, it comes from my support system. Um, like I do, I do love the game, but some days it's, it's hard. Some days you don't want to do it. And having people around us, like the coaches, your teammates, uh, family, you know, it, it pushes you, it, it pushes you to keep going and to not give up. Even when we do have adversity, even when we do lose a game or have a bad season, you know, every year is a new year, every year you get to step into a new mold of yourself and, I think that that's I think that's what's so special about this team. You have so many new players coming from all different places that have um, that have a will for this, that that have a story that they want to that they want to share with the world. And I think putting all of us together, it's going to it's going to make for a, a great season. It sounds so exciting. And listening to you, I can tell that you're ready and you're ready to get going. Uh, what did you miss the most that we will be able to see in your play on the floor? from last year? Um, honestly, just just showing who I, tr I truly am. I think that um, throughout uh, my years at the collegiate level, I haven't been able to be in a position where I can play to the best of my ability to, sh to show people who Kayla Nelson truly is. And I think that this year it's, it's gonna be tough, but I think I'm more than capable of doing that. I think I'm more than capable of being the player I used to be, if not better. And um, I just can't wait to get back out there with my team, um, just feeling that love and being able to pass the ball around and scream for everybody that gets to make their shots and stuff. It, it's, it's, a, it's a feeling that you never want to let go of again. Kaylin, when you're playing at your best, give us your scouting report for what we can look forward to, how you're going to mesh with your teammates and what we'll see out of you this year. Um, a lot of a lot of grit, a lot of uh, strength in the paint. I think that I'm a driver first, shooter second. Um, just a lot of just a lot of you know, and ones, free throws, um, um, open shots. Uh, just being able to be a force in the in the paint for us as, as a team. Well, we're looking forward to seeing that you and your teammates underneath Coach Pop. Playing that underdog role in the Valley this year. We wish you well, and we thank you so much for being with us on the Missouri Valley Preview Show. Thank you so much for having me.